Our eyes are like planets that see things. They tell a story of all the times we've been in love and how happy we are to have met her here again. When is the first experience you can remember feeling love? Feeling love? Oh man, it probably had to be when I was turning, I think it was 10, um, I had got a basketball goal for my pops because all I wanted to do was play basketball and he got it for me and it was like, yo, you heard me and you responded and that was like a real feeling of like, you know, just um, being seen and loved. I would say probably early on, like as a baby, uh, my parents were really affectionate. So I grew up in a very affectionate home. So as early as I can remember, I always felt like love was something that was very essential in my life. I don't, I don't think I've ever experienced not feeling love. So I can't remember when it started. I'm um, pretty young because my mother, she shows that she loves me. Probably just from my parents. Um, Seeing them love on each other, seeing them love me and my brother the way that they do. So just the love that I got from family and my parents. When my dad bought me my first stuffed animal teddy bear, because he knew I could not sleep alone without him, so he bought me a teddy bear. I don't know, probably I, I got this scar on my wrist. I like um, dove for a ball as a kid, like playing with some friends, and like I cut my wrist open on like this uh, pothole thing. And like I went to, talk, to tell my mom like I was bleeding real bad, and she like freaked out. But I could tell that like she freaked out because she cared about me and she was concerned. So like that kind of showed out like my mom really loves me. I would say just holidays at my grandma's house, man, because that's when all the family would get together. And you could literally feel the love and feel the connection. And of course, it's family, so everybody didn't get along all the time. But that's definitely the first memories of love I had. Yeah, since I was born. Like, I lived in an open house. My mom showed me love from the beginning. And I was like, my best friend. It was when my dad used to take me to school in the morning, preschool. Like, he had an early job, so my mom, she would have to go her separate ways after breakfast and all this kind of stuff. So, my dad used to take me to school in the morning. And he would like give me a hug, kiss me, and tell me, I love you. I love you today. Then I go in the school and be happy to see him when I come out of school. It's my high school sweetheart. That was back in 10th grade. Yeah, so it lasted five years. Right, right. But unfortunately, we're not together now. But I was head over the hills. And it was kind of like, you can't tell me nothing. Though she didn't necessarily like me back. I remember feeling loved by her just because of the cadence like in her in her voice or just the way she took time to enunciate or say certain words like in a song and that was the first time I felt truly loved and she listened to me she listened to what I had to say had to have been within a familial context because um, I would describe love as rooted in a feeling of safety and warmth. Kind of like a deep interior feeling where things kind of go quiet outside of you <clears throat> and you don't have to be, um, you don't have to be so on guard or defensive. And I think definitely my mother um, offered that to me. Do you feel like the environment you grew up in reflects the type of people you pursue in relationships or the type of people you attract as friends? I think it could be a little bit of both because you'll try to look for that or if it's really tainted or toxic, you'll run from that. So you'll try to get the opposite or you'll just attract it. So, so because of my upbringing, I am very in touch with my X chromosome. And I have an older sister, a younger sister, have an aunt that's four years older than me. We divorced and moved in with my grandmother uh, and grandfather, but had aunts still living in the house or whatever. So I've, I've never not known positive female energy, like ever. So that's what attracts me to a woman, positive female energy. Yeah, I think by me not growing up with my dad, it kind of put a damper on what I think a male should do if I was seeking a male partner. It's kind of harder to say what I would like from them or expect. But being able to see how certain patterns are formed with how my mother and 
her father's relationship was. She grew up with him always paying for things and taking care of her kids. So her thought process began to be, I need a man that's going to pay for everything and take care of my kids. But it created, with, he was doing the best that he could, just trying to help, but he did not know that that was forming a certain vision in her head of what a man should be. It, it just made me a better person because um, I might have not had my father in my life, but I had my mother to, to, to be on um, my backbone, and it brought me and taught me what I need to do. So like, just because my parents showed their love a certain way to me doesn't mean that like me showing my love that way to other people is gonna, you know what I'm saying? Like, love like it's totally like different, and I'm still like learning that, like because people like to feel it differently, and I have to remember like just because you like to be, you know, whatever your parents is you doesn't mean that's how they, yeah. I don't feel like it's a reflection of what I'm attracted to. I feel like it helps me to know what I don't want because I know I don't want a spouse or a partner like what I saw growing up. So like when I see something that's like, oh, this is a little too similar to my home life, I'm like, oh, got to go the other way. So for me, it's kind of the opposite. It repels, I guess. Like I've noticed as I got older that there was something that I missed as a child or as a teenager. Um, that I didn't recognize consciously until I got older, that I was missing that. So now I feel like subconsciously, I kind of look for that within certain relationships I have now as an adult, um, because there was a lack of that when I was a kid or a teenager. Everyone, I believe, bases their love language and love life off of their human experiences. So since I had such a positive human experience and love for my parents, that's what I look for. I feel like the example that my parents gave me really wasn't a good example of it. But my personality always stood out. And I've been told that I had an outstanding personality. So I feel like I kind of base it off myself. So if I wanted to look for joy and positivity, I would give joy and positivity to find joy and positivity, positivity to get it back. So I feel like my, my surroundings, my circumstances really didn't set the ground for me. I kind of made my own. I like strong-headed people. I like providers. Um, I like loving, caring people. People that adore me. Um, I adore them. Um, it's a mutual thing. I'm a Libra, so everything is 50-50. So it's like a, yeah, a love for love type thing. So yeah, that's like the things I like that contributes from my dad. But the relationship between my mom and my father was very strained, even though from the outside looking in, it was like the Cosby show. You know, it looked very well put together. But I think I attract men who aren't emotionally available to me. And um, I try to make excuses for it because of the vibes that come along with it. And then the men who want to... Um, Commit, I'm not so interested in. They don't mentally stimulate me or I'm not as sexually attracted to them. And I would definitely say that as I'm getting older, I'm realizing I might have some problems that I need to work on because I am naturally attracting the good and bad qualities of my father. Um, more so, very independent. So it's hard to basically let that guard down and let somebody else take the role because I'm just used to doing everything more so for myself. I haven't had much rom romantic experience. I mean, the person that I've been with, as I mentioned to you before, I've, it's been almost five years, or will be five years next year. <clears throat> um, but outside of him, he's my, he's my first boyfriend, and first and only boyfriend to this, this uh, moment and I've never really been on dates before like that really just wasn't the thing that people were asking me to go on <clears throat> and I wasn't I was I'm like not necessarily romantically forward I can be forward in all other regards but in terms of romance I want to be courted I want somebody to ask me for the longest I was like yo I'm a lesbian I'm hardcore like I love women but then you know I started embracing my femininity and I was like hey I like that beautiful soul I really don't care what type of organs you got actually, do you respect me? Do you appreciate me? And once I was more comfortable with that, I realized that I'm not a label. I'm really just a human being trying to look for a human being that is fully complete in themselves, and I'm complete, and we just make like this 200%, you know, relationship. 
because people talk about 50 50 and it's all about 100 100 like be a whole you and that's what i'm looking for somebody that is just not afraid to be themselves and love themselves mm -hmm. like almost like nature versus nurture kind of what you grow up around and what's instilled in you you kind of look for that and it's not always a good thing because sometimes you even find yourself dating people who might have the bad qualities of your parents, not their good qualities, but I've definitely found myself in situations that mirror my parents' relationship. What's your definition of being in love? Mm. So, <laughs> that's a good question. I don't know. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> With your family members or your kids, you kind of learn what love is because whether you're upset at them or not, you love them regardless however uh, if you base your relationship off of being in love then it's probably prone to not last as long because you know what I'm saying it's just more of like a current feeling that you're feeling at the time I think it's a little bit of lust mixed in that in love thing and uh, I think it sparks things that we don't realize um, we're probably being blinded by a lot of things and then when the in love feeling goes away then people get infatuation and love mixed up all the time. Because if I'm infatuated with you, I only love the great aspects of you. But if I'm in love, then I love the bad parts about you too. You can't bring happiness to a relationship. You have to have happiness yourself. You can't go searching for happiness in that relationship. If you do, you'll be searching for forever. So. I most definitely have run towards people who give love and people that aren't afraid to show their love. I grew up in a household where love wasn't always expressed, so I'm always looking for somebody that's outwardly trying to just express their love by any means, and is, and is unashamed and afraid of it. So I just love me, and I love you more. I was a little naive in what I in in, in that I thought I had to like everything that he did, um, because I'm coming from an example of several examples where it didn't seem like they liked anything that one another did. So I was like, if I don't like what he does, it's kind of dangerous. Like, you know, I just want <clears throat> to kind of be able to safely navigate one another's interests. Um, now I understand that that totally doesn't have to be the case, um, especially since we are different people, even though we're quite paralleled in a lot of ways. There's definitely a lot of uh, perpendicular and askew angles with places where we just don't meet at all. I'm always trying to make sure everybody else is okay and making sure that they're happy and, you know, trying to help in any way that I can. But as far as me, accepting help and stuff like that is more complicated for me to accept help from others. And I don't want to be one of those people that never experienced real love, you know, and I'm out here, cap as they say, capitalizing on all the love I can get, you know. If you want to give me love, let me have it. I'll take it. I am a very affectionate person and I'm also a very verbal person so I am uh, blunt with my feelings and I always express myself. I'm not the type of person to hold it in so if I feel some kind of way you will know. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah definitely okay. which has been you know a good thing and a bad thing because some people <laughs> didn't grow up that way and mm. it has caused issues when you get with someone who's not used to getting affection. Mm. You practice self-care all the time. Um, how has your self-care improved your relationships? Oh, my self-care has kept me out of relationships. <laughs> I found the more I took care of myself, the more I was by myself. Probably more so like trust people and be more free than just close and impact. So my first thing with self-care was meditation. I've been meditating for about seven years, yeah, seven years now. When I moved to New York, I started meditating because that city gets rough at times. So I had to learn quick, like, I need a bubble. I need a space for myself. So meditation really helped me. Making sure I'm healthy and wise by making sure I take care of myself. Is it spiritually, um, health-wise, or anything, I make sure I'm, I'm taking care of I just, I have to remind myself that um, I do like to be alone. And so, just paying attention to myself, the same thing. Because uh, I know how I used to just um, give, give and show my love to other people. But like all that I was giving to others, I was not giving to myself. And that's what I'm learning like right now in life. <laughs> but I think a way to start is is by taking care of yourself. And, th and therefore being like, Hmm. So if I know this about myself, 
I can go and I guess like implement that into the world. I can kind of see that everyone's different for a reason. Things happen for different reasons. So I feel like anytime something happens, whether it's just something someone tells me or something that happens directly to me, I feel like I'm better at stepping back now and looking at it from a different light. I can't give you all of myself mm -hmm. if, not, if I'm not okay, right? And so often people try to focus on being the happiness for someone else. So even in relationships, you try to be someone else's happiness. When in turn, you have to be happy with yourself and then you give your all to someone else. I guess start off by saying when I didn't practice self-care, um, I found myself trying to do a lot to make other people happy, always worried about how other people felt and I was really neglecting myself and how I felt making myself happy and um, in the long run that really hurt my relationships. But when I started to practice self-care and really focus on what Andy needed and what Andy wanted, it only improved my relationships because then since I was I was taking better care of myself and I was able to give more of myself to other people and give myself genuine. I had a guy tell me literally, he was like, You changed. And it wasn't like good you changed. I was like, and I had I was like for the better. And he was like I'll go on streaks of self-care and self-love and then I fall victim to things and, and the funny thing is I will be in the act of doing something knowing that this high is gonna bring me a real low afterwards and still do it that's probably something I need to get better at honestly I think a lot of times people like show me love and I don't necessarily show myself that love so I think that's when I practice self-care, that's what I'm trying to practice more, of showing myself the love that I want other people to give me. I would say that my, the form of self-care that feeds me the most is having access to silence and privacy, which fortunately for the last year and a half, or going on a year and a half, I've been able to live alone. So my space, like when I go home at night, can be that for me. Um, so it's, it's really necessary for me to have access to that kind of quiet so that I can just think and be amongst myself, reflect on all of the things that I've ingested throughout the day, reflect on the conversations that I've had, like just to be able to have a definitive space to do that in is very important. Solitude helps me a lot. It helps me calculate it all and get it all together and, you know, remind me like, this is you, girl. You're the shit, girl. You project how you feel on the inside, I believe. I feel that. And you attract reflections. And, and you do. And you what you see. And you yourself. also have to understand that people like you attract what you want. No. People are attracted to your aura. And you pull in what you allow to pull in. I feel like that kind of kind of helped me out with other relationships. And I noticed that there's some things that I don't like and some things that I do like that I thought I liked. So I just stepped back and literally changed my whole mindset. And that really made me the person I am today. I mean, if, you, if you're really centered with yourself as much as you can be, I mean, that only helps you be a better friend, better brother, brother, father, brother, whatever, to like, the people around you. I like to like have those days where I don't do anything. You ask me to go somewhere, I'm going to say no. I learn to, in itself, know is self-care because people don't say no enough. Um, people always try to people please, and that used to be me a lot. And I had to learn how to, like, please me. It improves my relationships. What I end up doing is I end up building up all this self-care, y'all. This is crazy. I end up getting good at it and then pouring it into somebody else. And they don't give me nothing back. And now I'm empty and I got to start all over again. So, to answer the question is, I'm still working. In what ways do you feel supported by the people around you? Or if, if you don't, then what? how would you desire being supported by the people around you? I guess doing the same things that I do for myself. I don't feel that way, but I guess I would hope that they would hold me accountable, tell me if I'm not doing so great, or if they see a negative habit or pattern forming that I've spoken about that I don't want to happen, and they see it happening, them coming to me and telling me that kind of slipping up. I care about you. I want you to do better. You know how to do better. You're very logical, etc. And I think my friends definitely reflect the love that I have for myself in the sense that if I know that I'm, I'm good, I'm going to make sure that 
my friends are good and I feel like my friends definitely reflect that that passion that desire I'm very grateful to have close friends that are like incredible listeners like they listen both verbatim and interpretively um, so they're able to kind of show me something back in a way that I hadn't yet articulated it or maybe add a detail within something that I uh, shared with them that I hadn't verbalized on my own. So I would say <clears throat> the main support that I need from any person in relationship is like listening, like deep and connected listening. I most definitely have support and um, the people and the person that gives me the support the most, um, it's just more so just be you, be free. Because without being free, you know, you just lock down and you can't express yourself. So no matter how crazy my ideas may seem, no matter no matter how um, you know afraid I am, they always push me to be like, look, if you fail, it's okay. That's the part of this life that you gotta fail to understand it. So I get support by just being free. They're always encouraging me, you know. You gotta be able to trust, you gotta be able to, you know, there's nothing wrong with asking for help, you know, everybody needs help, that's what we're here for, you know, that type of thing. So I get it, but it's still like, hard for me to just go to somebody and say, hey, can you help me with this, that, or the other, or hey, I, I'm just really feeling this type of way today. I just really need a listening ear or just even a hug. Mm -hmm. That's kind of still, kind of, it kind of feels creepy. <laughs> I feel like they just encourage me to be the best version of myself and they just all, they're always uplifting me and just encouraging me to be me and I feel like that's really important. Huh? Just loving yourself and being yourself with zero, you know, what's given. Like, not caring about what the world thinks or how society thinks you should be. Like, being free. Like, one thing that I stand for, like, my brand name is Free Creatives. Like, be you. Just be free in <laughs> whatever way you feel that is. Mentally, my... My stepmom is a really big help on that, and she even pushed me spiritually. So it wasn't anything for us. She actually was like, "Yeah, I'm on your own." Um, but as for physically and emotionally, I had to actually do that myself because nobody can tell me how to heal during the process. I can only tell myself. The people around me definitely support me as far as my career is concerned, and just in life, they believe in me. And sometimes I'm like, "For real? For real?" And so yeah, that I appreciate. What I've learned from that was my expectations are not anybody else's. Cause just because I expect this stuff, that don't mean that's what they're going to give. And it could be through a lot of things that are going on in their life. And a lot of this comes from the four agreements because I've been reading this book like crazy. But... <laughs> But the expectations, like, because just because I'm the person, like, I give, I give, I give, that don't mean that person's going to give. Um, so I would say, you know, in order for me to be supported within that kind of space, uh, I have to listen for who this person is. Like, how does this person move through the world? How do they understand things? And from that, I can understand what it is that they're imparting to me and take that in stride and not understand it as like a limit. So I wouldn't say I'm limited in support at all.